My name is Mason, and I love the outdoors. You might call me an outdoors enthusiast, but that doesn't even begin to capture my passion and love for being outside. And whether it's a hike or a backpacking trip or a kayaking trip or just a simple walk through the woods, I am happiest when I'm outdoors. But that's not my day job. In my day job, I am a transgender rights activist, advocate, and educator with the Massachusetts Transgender Political Coalition. I have dedicated my career to ending discrimination on the basis of gender identity and gender expression through law and policy and education. I should also say I am transgender myself. I identify as transmasculine, which for me means that I identify and present myself in a masculine way, although I was assigned female at birth. Now, you may be wondering where this is going. I started with the outdoors and I'm moving to my work of transgender advocacy and how do those two things connect? But for me, the connection between the outdoors and transgender rights and my identity is critical. So to understand that connection between the outdoors and transgender rights, you have to take a step back into my childhood. As a kid, I struggled like many do with my gender identity and gender expression. I was oftentimes withdrawn and sullen. I dealt with crippling anxiety and depression because of my gender identity and because of society's expectations of who I was supposed to be based on my gender identity. So in all of that, there were moments where I felt like my very spirit and my will to live were crushed. But there was one place that I could go where I felt alive and I felt like I was authentically me and that was the outdoors it was the only place that I could be uh, my authentic self without fear of expectations and society telling me who I had to be and how I had to be that way I joined the Girl Scouts uh, and thanks to the Girl Scouts I can still tie 10 nautical knots in under two minutes I know Morse code and I can start a campfire even in the pouring rain and to this very day, I am still a proud Lifetime Girl Scout. But through all of that, I knew that I could find myself and be my authentic self outdoors, in the wilderness, whether it was the oceans or the mountains, the desert, whatever it may be, that's where I could be myself. Now, today, I am much more at peace with my gender identity and gender expression, but I still go to the wilderness to find that authenticity and peace. Because although I'm at peace with my gender identity, the world is not always a peaceful place to be when you're transgender. <laughs> and in fact, transgender pe people face disproportionate levels of discrimination and bias in our world today. Uh, in fact, uh, it's important to recognize that not only all transgender people, but particularly transgender women of color face disproportionate levels of discrimination, violence, and bias. It is only six months into the year 2018, and we've already lost 13 transgender people to murder here in the U.S. And 12 of those 13 murders were transgender people of color. The first murder actually occurred here in Massachusetts. In the very first few weeks of, the, of January of this year, we lost a trans woman named Krista who was a friend and colleague. Now, personally, I also have faced discrimination and bias because of my gender identity. Because of the work that I do, uh, opponents to transgender rights have posted, for instance, my picture online. Um, so opponents to transgender rights have posted my picture online and called me a woman with a beard. I get pretty frequent, frequent hate mail, uh, and hate mail that calls me delusional, pathetic, uh, brain dead because of my gender identity and my gender expression and the work that I do for transgender rights. Despite all of that discrimination that I've faced, a lot of people may say that, well, you're probably safer here in Massachusetts than any other state in the country, right? I mean, we are progressive, marriage equality, Massachusetts, right? And it's true. Massachusetts has a reputation of being a very inclusive LGBTQ state, partially because of our history and our place in history as the first state to pass marriage equality. Uh, we are also known for our popular gaycation spaces like uh, Provincetown or Northampton. Uh, and we also have this, well, pretty politically blue tint. We're known as a progressive LGBTQ inclusive space. 
but the reality is that our stance on transgender rights is far less notable. Here in Massachusetts, we were only the 18th state to pass completed non-discrimination non protections for gender identity and gender expression. Uh, we not only passed those only recently in 2016, but those rights are now under attack and could be rolled back in a matter of months. So to understand the status of transgender rights and legal protections, we have to go back to 2016. Now in 2016, it's when, is the year we passed non-discrimination protections in the state of Massachusetts for public accommodations. Now I want you to please remember that phrase, public accommodations. It is critical to what I'm talking about and where we're going. But we passed those rights in 2016, and very soon after, in just a matter of weeks, opponents to transgender equality gathered enough signatures to now put that very law up for a ballot referendum in November of 2018. What that means is that Massachusetts will be the first state in the country to vote on transgender rights at the ballot. That's critical. But let's go back to that phrase I used a moment ago, public accommodations. So what does public accommodations mean? Now, opponents of transgender rights oftentimes talk about public accommodations and transgender rights as bathroom bills. You might have heard that phrase, bathroom bill or bathroom law, because that's how the opposition talks about our rights. But in reality, public accommodations mean something very different under Massachusetts law. Public accommodations under Massachusetts law is actually defined as any public space. Any place that is open to or solicits patronage of the public is a public accommodation. And that's what we're voting on in November of 2018 for transgender people. But what do pu public accommodations actually look like? Well, they include places like hospitals and libraries, public transportation, and yes, the very zoo I'm standing in is a public accommodation. But I also think when I hear public accommodations or public spaces, I think about the places that are most important to me and the places where I feel happiest. And that's parks and trails all across Massachusetts. So what I am talking about here is the fact that in November, the public of Massachusetts will be voting on my ability as a transgender person to stand in this zoo. You'll be voting on the human rights and dignity for transgender people to go to a grocery store or go to a mall or hike or backpack or kayak. Now, a few years ago when we were doing this work, a friend of mine, Missy, approached me and she said, what is your favorite public accommodation? And my first thought went to the upcoming backpacking trip I had. And I thought about, well, I have to go to the store to get supplies for that backpacking trip. And that store is a public accommodation. And then on the way to the trailhead, I have to stop and get gas. And that gas station is a public accommodation. And then I get to the actual trail, and I start my hike through the state parks of Massachusetts. And I'm staying in a shelter along the trail. And those trails and that shelter, all of those are public accommodations. And if we roll back these rights in November of 2018, that will mean that I could be discriminated against or I could be kicked out of those places simply because of my gender identity. So I thought about the trails and parks, and then I took a step back and I said, what about transgender youth? What about our youth who don't have the ability to vote, and yet they're gonna see their identities questioned and invalidated on the front page of the newspaper and on news programs all through until November of this year? And then, I thought about the country. Here we are in progressive LGBTQ inclusive state of Massachusetts. And what does it mean that we are voting on the human rights of transgender people? And furthermore, what does it mean if we roll back those rights and we take away basic human protections for transgender people in public spaces? That's what's at stake. It's not just about here in Massachusetts. It's not just about our youth. It is about our country as a whole that's looking to us to lead the way for human rights. That's what's at stake. 
Now, a lot of people ask me, what are the biggest challenges in doing this work? What are the, the barriers to passing and making sure we affirm transgender rights on the ballot? Well, some of the biggest issues we face are the myths and misconceptions about who transgender people are. One of the big myths that is out there is that transgender rights somehow make people, particularly women or children, less safe in bathrooms or locker rooms. That is a myth. And in fact, in the 19 other states where we've passed these non-discrimination protections, some of which, by the way, have been on the books for decades, in those 19 other states, we have never seen an increase in public safety or threats to public safety because of transgender rights. And that's why multiple law enforcement, district attorneys, as well as the attorney general have come out in support of transgender rights, because they know that these rights don't make us less safe. They make the entire state safer for transgender and all people from border to border. Now, in thinking about all of this, thinking about my love for the outdoors and these rights that are at risk, I was wondering how can I make this happen? How can I raise awareness about the rights that are at stake and our basic human dignity as transgender people? In my Jewish faith, there's an old saying that says we pray with our feet. And that's what I intend to do. So this fall, in a groundbreaking public education effort, my friend Ev and I are hiking across the state of Massachusetts from the b Connecticut border to the Vermont border, 95 miles total. We are hiking for our rights in what we are calling hashtag hike for rights to access those public spaces that we deserve as basic human beings in this state. We are hiking for our rights to access public accommodation. And we're doing it to raise awareness about who we are as trans people and the rights that are at stake. So what that means is that beginning in August, the Massachusetts section of the Appalachian Trail will be our home and a vehicle for us to raise awareness about who transgender people are and our rights to public spaces. We have partnered the Massachusetts Transgender Political Coalition along with the Venture Out Project and Maybright Group to come together and to, to raise awareness for the ballot initiative and our human rights. All three organizations are dedicated to making this state safer and more welcoming for transgender people. I should also mention, we are going to be joined by Maxwell the dog, who, will be, who is a four-year-old boxer schnauzer mix, who will provide critical support, motivation, and yes, security along the 95-mile route. Our hike will culminate at the top of Mount Greylock, which is the highest peak in Massachusetts, and we will fly the transgender pride flag from that highest peak. Because from the highest peak and to the lowest valleys, transgender people are a part of the bedrock of this state. And we deserve the basic human rights to make sure we are safe there. All are welcome to join us at the summit on, on Mount Greylock for lunch, or even a day hike up to the summit of Mount Greylock. It's our opportunity to raise our voices together and say that human rights are essential, not for just some people, but for all people, including transgender people in the state of Massachusetts. And this work is critical. If we lose this vote in November, our human rights will be rolled back for the first time in the nation. And we cannot let that happen. Not for transgender people, not for adults, for our youth, for trans people of color who are facing disproportionate levels of discrimination and bias. On the personal level, this is my opportunity to combine where I started, the outdoors, the place where I feel most at home, to combine that with the rights and efforts for transgender rights here in the state of Massachusetts. I mentioned earlier that for me, the outdoors, they saved my life. And this fall, my hope is the outdoors will also save my rights. Thank you. <laughs>